Welcome back everyone, I'm K Plays Games, this is EVE Online, and today, by popular demand, we're fitting out a Raven for level 4 missions. Last time out, we did a railgun sniping rock, and it wasn't very good, and lots of you have been asking about Raven, so let's do a Raven. So let's open the fitting window, select Raven, right click, and simulate. Okay, let's have a look at the Raven's traits. 5% bonus to Rapid Heavy Missile, Cruise Missile and Torpedo Launcher Rate of Fire, so that's damage. And 10% bonus to Cruise Missile and Torpedo Maximum Velocity, so that's range. So we get range and damage. That makes it quite a good mission runner. As we see it has 7 high slots, 6 of which can be missile launchers, 4 of which can be turrets. But usually you'll go six missile launchers and then a utility high for something like a drone control range if you're going to be a sniper. Most people do fit Ravens as snipers with six cruise missile launchers and then some shields and a micro jump drive and then you just plink away from extremely long range with around about a thousand DPS. But to be honest I'm not going to do that because as I said we did a sniper fit in the previous video and indeed on this channel already as part of my original Omega Let's Play series we did a micro jump drive and cruise missile ship for run running level 4 missions it wasn't a raven, it was an Armageddon so I'll put a link to that in the top right hand corner of your screen right now and you can go and have a look at that so what are we going to do with this raven if we're not going to make it cruise missile sniper well we can go rapid heavy missiles which have excellent application and pretty good damage but then they do also have a 35 second reload timer and I think we're going to be running out of missiles quite often and being in reload quite often as well. So I think what we're going to do is that we're going to do torpedoes. So let's have a look at the hardware. I'm down, missile launchers, torpedo launchers. Now I know that the previous fit we did was pretty much rookie friendly with low skill things, but I think we're at the stage now where we can go for our tech 2 fits. I'm not going to go insane and start blinging it out with dead space modules because A, I don't think we need to, and B, they cost quite a lot. Let's put 6 tech 2 torpedo launchers on this thing, and to increase the damage I think we're going to want three ballistic control twos if you go more than three then you start bumping into the big time problems with stacking penalty the first one you put on gets 100% of its bonus the second gets 87 the third gets about 58 and then the fourth gets about 20% so you don't really want to just be getting 20% of this bonus you can use a slot for something else which is a bit better right so let's load this up with some ammunition shall we if we put tech one torpedoes in we're only getting 825 and that's not huge i mean the range is only 44 kilometers as well which isn't great but if we use the tech 2 ones the javelins are for long range remember we're doing 44 kilometers now if we put javelins in the range goes up to 66 which is much better but the damage goes down to 742 which is terrible but if we put rage torpedoes in look at this 1282 the range is only 36 but we aren't doing 1282 dps which is brilliant I and mean, that's much more than 825 which is why i went for tech 2 if i was going to use tech 1 launchers i probably would go cruise missile but at tech 2 you can actually get away with using torpedoes so that's what we're going to be doing Okay, so these are only 36 kilometer range, so we're going to have to get them into range. So how are we going to do that? Well, obviously micro jump drive's not going to be much use. We could try an afterburner, a 100 mega newton afterburner. Let's put a Tech 2 one on. But then, this being a battleship, it only makes it go 380 meters a second, and that's going to take forever to get us into range. So let's not do an afterburner. Let's instead do a micro warp drive. 500 mega newton quad lift restrained, I think. Okay, now we're going over a thousand meters a second. It's still going to take us ages to get into range, but I've got a plan for that. And that plan is called missile guidance computers. Let's put two of these on. Now I'm using two for a reason because torpedoes have absolutely gigantic explosions and they're pretty slow. If you have a look at this, the explosion velocity is only 116 meters a second. 
and the explosion radius is larger than most frigates. So they're not very good at applying damage to small things and we'd quite like them to be better at that. So two missile guidance computers and put precision scripts on, which helps them apply the damage. So now it's much faster explosions, much smaller explosions, and that's going to help. But this will also help at hitting things at range. So if we put two range scripts in, with the Rage torpedoes, it's 54 kilometers, which is still pretty crap. But if we put javelins in, all of a sudden we can now hit at 97 kilometers. So the plan with this is going to be, if the enemy are very, very far away, we'll be able to target them, put two range scripts in, start approaching them with a micro warp drive, and as we approach, we'll be hitting them with javelins, and then when we get to within about 50 kilometers, we'll simply reload both the scripts and the torpedoes to the shorter range rage torpedoes to put the damage right up and actually wail on things. Doing it like this, I think we'll be able to kill a few battle cruisers before we get into range of the battleships, and that will help us. So tank-wise, it's classically a shield ship, so let's go shields. In the previous episode, we did go an extra large shield booster and just turned it on as and when we needed it, but as we're going to be fighting up close, that's not really going to be good enough. We're going to be microwing our ammo and scripts, I don't really want to have to be microwing the shields as well. So we're going to go large shield booster 2, and we'll change this to show the shield boost rate. And the shield boost rate is only 69 hit points a second, which isn't great. And we'll also put on two multi-spectrum shield hardeners. Now the thing about multi-spectrums is that everything's been changed a little bit. And the way it was changed means that two multi-spectrum hardeners are almost just as good as two dedicated hardeners. Um, we can have a look at that. Usually when you're flying a Raven, and as we are in Galinti space, you'll be fighting the Serpentis, which are kinetic and thermal damage. So our thermal is 55, our kinetic is 66 with multi-spectrum, so remember that, 55 and 66. And now we'll put a kinetic and a thermal, and we've only gone up to 56 and 67, so it's 1% resist better having dedicated hardeners than it is just having multi-spectral. I mean, yes, you can overheat these and it goes to 63 and 72, but you can overheat the multi-spectrums as well and it goes to 60 and 70, so they're it's actually all right to be lazy and just fly this like that. Now the cap is only 1 minute 32, we're going to have to deal with that. We're going to have to deal with that right now. And obviously the first port of call is a large cap battery too. It goes up to 2 minutes 10, which still isn't great. Now we have these two low slots. I mean our damage application is being handled by these computers. If we add another missile guidance enhancer here, it is going to be getting stacking penalised on both of these. So it does like way less than these anyway, and it will be, it'll only be getting 57% of its bonus anyway, so let's not do that. Let's do more cap things. Now one thing people get wrong is that they try and put capacitor power relays on shield chips, and these actually debuff your shield boosted amount. If we put two of these on, as we see, the shield boost goes all the way down to 55 and a half, so that's not a good thing to do. Capacitor flux coils are what you need. Okay, so the cap's still only at 150, but at least the shield is still doing 69. So it's rigs to the rescue for a capacitor, I think. Let's have a look. Engineering, large. Let's just put the big ones on, the big tech twos. Two of them at tech two, and one of them at tech one. Ah, looky here, we're actually just cap stable. I mean, that is only, only just cap stable, but it is cap stable. So we do have a cap stable torpedo firing, micro warp drive, and shield boosting Raven that's doing 1200 DPS. It'll do more DPS when I actually put some drones in the drone bay. Combat drones, start off with some mediums. We'll just go for tech two hammerheads. We do know that hammerheads are pretty good against everything other than angels. If we come up against angels, I might take these out and put Valkyries and Warriors on. And as always, we'll throw on some light drones as well in the form of five hobgoblins. I mean, this ship can only use 50 megabit worth of drones, which is five mediums. And to be honest, most of the time it's just going to be using the light drones and the drones are only going to add another 99 DPS, but 
The drones will be taking out frigates and destroyers, whilst our torpedoes demolish battlecruisers, cruisers and battleships. So that is the plan for this ship. I'm not sure how well it's going to act, but we'll soon find out. I mean, this shield booster is pretty bad. But I do have a plan for that. What we can do, we can try sacrificing one of these missile guidance computers. It doesn't, ha it doesn't harm the paper DPS, but it does mean that we'll be applying less of it, especially to things like cruisers. But then this does give us enough room to get a shield boost amplifier on. Shield boost amplifiers increase your boost amount by 36%, which is pretty nice. So our shield boost will go up to 93.8 per second. So we'll try it with the missile guidance computers and I'll actually buy a shield boost amplifier and carry it in the cargo and if we need to we'll dock up and we'll change it right so I'll go and buy this and then we'll run a couple of missions okay one battleship newly purchased and fitted it's not the most interesting model it did used to look a lot worse than this to be honest but there we are I have bought quite a lot of ammo because I think we're going to need it and this is our shield boost amplifier in case of emergencies so let's get a mission well this is interesting the first mission I've been offered is exactly the same as the first mission we got in the rock so this would be quite a good thing to do actually let me show you how it operates so we know how this works let's just get out there and do it although I am going to grab some EM ammunition Okay, we're in the mission system. One thing I forgot to say is that I had a look at the fit whilst I was fitting it and I saw we had some more rooms so I put an auto targeting system 1 in just to give us some more extra targets. So our maximum targets is now 9. We know how this mission goes. Warp drive active. You warp in, there's a few groups of drones. Each time you kill one of the groups it spawns a reinforcement group so you have to fleet tag them, so we'll do that now, we'll form a fleet with ourselves. Fleet tag the group, so we only kill them one at a time. We know we're cap stable, so we can turn the tank on, and we'll put the missile precision scripts on, and here's the mission site, with nothing in it at the moment. Let's put the tactical overlay on, so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, so our flight range is 36 kilometers. I have to remember that. Hello drones, hello. Where are you? It will take a decent amount of time to actually get up to maximum speed. There they are. Okay, let's just... One that, two that, three that, and four that. So let's... Kill number two first, shall we? Because it's a battle cruiser, and we don't like battle cruisers. Right, let's see what 1200 DPS looks like. Well, that looks pretty good. One dead drone. Let's just hold control, draw a box, lock all these guys up. I am going to keep moving just at our slow speed at the minute. We don't have to be going fast. And we'll be out our drones and drones can go and kill the destroyers. Let's have a look what torpedo explosions look like. Really cool is the answer. Well, we're smashing these battleships to pieces. I do like that. Okay, our shield is taking a bit of a battering, but that's to be expected. I should probably have set the ship health. So we'll do that now. Come to HUD settings and go to configure ship health alerts. Yeah, and we've put our shield at 50%. So if we hear the shield warning, then we know it's time to run away. Because it means our tank is breaking. Yeah, this one here looks like he's a little bit out of range, or just on the edge of a range, so we're just going to approach him. And flip some EM missiles right up his tailpipe. Did you see their weakest to EM? Then we'll just 
turn the microwatt drive off. We don't need to be going that fast anymore. We've got them well within range. Well, that was nice. Right, let's get the other battle cruiser. He's easily within. Okay, let's torpedo this bomber. Locking times in battleships, man. And the inconvenience of having to wait an extra few seconds to target things. I can put up with that. You go 186, 186, 186. Which means that the torpedoes are applying perfectly because they've got precision scripts. Boom! Dead. These guys are in range, which is nice. We'll just angle slightly towards them, just kind of cut the corner just to keep them in range. And this time, I think we'll put two torpedo launchers on each of the three battle cruisers and see how fast we can kill them. We're going to have to reload very soon. 429, 429, 429, 429. Excellent. Perfect application. A module has run out of charges. A Are they going to die? Out of charges. No, not quite. Oh well. Oh, yes. Is there still a... Yay, look at that. <laughs> perfect. That was enjoyable. So we know that we're doing perfect application to battle cruisers and indeed cruisers. So we might not need both of these scripts after all. That's interesting. We can try that on the next mission. We can sub one of these out and put a shield boost amplifier on. But then, of course, if it's a long range mission and we want to use the javelins, that means the javelins won't be able to have a second range script, so they won't hit all the way out to 97. Where would they hit? The javelins would only go to 81. Eh. That's the thing about Eve. As you play it, you'll tinker with your fits and see what works best for you and what doesn't work. Uh, let's just head down because we're going to get ourselves out of range of the next group if we're not careful. So yeah, this is working rather spectacularly.
Okay, let's start work on this guy. Let's see what our application is like to cruisers and we'll just double check that it is perfect. Yep. 186, 186, 186, 186. Boop. Dead. So let's just clear the cruisers off first, shall we? Or will we go for the battleships and let the drones kill the cruisers? I think we'll let the drones kill the cruisers. Actually undock our medium drones. We haven't done anything so far. Right, boys, off you go, have fun. I mean, I could just stop the ship, but since we're only going 141 metres a second, we're not drifting out of range too badly. And because we're at least moving at some kind of speed, we are reducing the damage we're taking. Right, well, that's one battleship dead already, wow. Five hundred and sixty-five with each and every torpedo to the battleships. That's delicious. Hey, look at that! Our drones killed something. I will come to a halt now. It would be nice if the next mission we got was long range, so we could actually show you how the javelins worked. just see if the agent's gonna oblige us with a long-range mission. Missile spam just looks so satisfying. Mm. Once you get good with missiles, as we see, that's the next salvo on its way and half of the salvo after that on its way once you get good with missiles you'll know how many salvos it takes to kill each thing so you'll be able to deactivate your missiles so you don't waste them like we just did but to be honest i don't really care i run missions so fast and i make so much money i can pay for 10 or so missiles to get lost well that was good we only had to reload about twice lovely Well, well, well. We have been given Dread Pirate Scarlet. I'm kind of tempted to do this, you know, even though it is pretty much one of the most difficult level 4 missions in the game, it does pay out an awful lot. Okay, you know what, let's do it. We're pushing out like 1300 DPS, we can do this. Easy peasy. Okay, the only thing I've changed is that I've, I'm bringing all the ammunitions with us, because as we know, this mission has pretty much all the NPCs. Now one thing in this mission that could stymie us is if there's lots of Garistas in there and they all jam us because we have no sensor booster so we won't be able to deal with that. But that's fine, as long as we can target something that's jamming us, we'll flip some Tech 2 Rage Torpedoes up them and remove them from the field. The only problem we have is that our drones, I mean Hobgoblins and Hammerheads are good against anything that's EM or Kinetic Thermal. So that's pretty much everything other than angels. If there's angels, then we'll just have to deal with doing the wrong damage type. But I did bring explosive torpedoes, so we'll be fine. Now, as we warp in, I'm going to group the weapons so they become a single icon, so it's easier to pick the correct ammunition and reload all six of them at once. There's a tip for free. We'll just turn everything on. Hope that the bad guys spawn within... 36 kilometers. If they don't, we've got the micro warp drive. We're going to have to use the micro warp drive anyway to pick up the key that the last guy in the first pocket drops. These guys are the bait. They will despawn pretty quickly. And then bad guys will spawn in and we'll have to reload to match whatever they are. And then we'll kill them and grab the key from the last one, which lets us get through the gate and into the complex. 
then there's a randomised enemies throughout this mission, so it's a really good test, which is fine because we know that our tank is Omni. All oh, right, it's Corelli, which is Serpentis, which means kinetic. Come on, reload, reload. There we are. Well, it took the same time to reload as it did to <laughs> target things, but that's how it goes. That's fine. Okay, now we're in range. We're just going to go straight up. So we're not approaching them anymore. So we've got our angular velocity up. See, our tank is taking a beating, but we are also killing them pretty, fit, pretty quickly. Okay, one battle cruiser dead. Let's start working on the cruisers. The tank was taking a beating as we were on direct approach, and because they hadn't killed anything. And now it's going to stabilise, we hope. Yep, there we go. Yeah, the tank's kind of holding steady. I mean, the tank on this ship really is minimal. Well, the way I fitted it is. Now, we don't want to go too high, otherwise we're going to get ourselves out of range, which I think we just have. Whoops. Let's just... Yeah, there's the low shield warning. But that's fine, it's okay, it's okay. Right, let's put the drones out. They can be of some use. I'm going to start on that one. Our damage has tailed off because we actually went out of range, now we're back in range, and we're absolutely demolishing them again. I'm not going to open fire until we're in range. Which is now. Come on tank, don't fail me now. There are up wells here, so we'll get free repairs at them if we need to leave. It's not like we're going to explode as soon as our shield goes down. We do have 15,000 hit points of armour and structure behind that if we need to rely on them. Well, the drones want to go on that one, so we'll do that one as well. I will bookmark things in this mission and salvage it, because I know from experience that you can get about 35 million in loot and salvage in this mission. It's really rather nice. The all the torpedoes are doing their thing. And the tanks coming back up. That's great. Actually, we need to approach this guy because he's going to drop the gate key. Forgot about that. All my other mission ships carry the key in their cargo at all times because it's not consumed. Pop. There he goes. We have to get into that cargo container. Let's reload to Mjolnir. Because if you've seen this channel before, I've done this mission a few times on this channel. And Dread Pirate Scarlet herself will be waiting for us just through this gate. And we have a few seconds. We have one shot to try and kill her. So what I think we'll do is that we'll try and kill her with some rage torpedoes straight away. Just one shot her. How much volley damage do we do? 7,290? Uh, it's not great. Oh, we'll see if it works. Gate key, thank you, I'll have that. I'm just going to turn the shield booster off while we fly to the gate just to let the cap recharge itself a little bit. So because we know that we're cap stable, like really low down like 30% and warping each cap so if we were we've been running for quite a while and the cap was down about 30 and if we'd warped it might have made it unstable and actually drain you do have to remember that warping costs capacitor Warp drive active. okay on to room two where scarlet awaits it would be nice if we could kill her twice in this mission 
because you're not supposed to be able to kill her in this second room, but you can. And then she spawns again in the third room and you can kill her twice, and her bounty is 5 million. So your reward for having really high damage is an extra 5 million-esque. Yeah, you can turn the shield booster back on now. Once the ship slowly aligns and gets itself into warp. Come on, ship, let's go. I'm not going to ungroup these because we're going to have to reload anyway. There she is. Oh no, we're not going to have to reload because it's EM guys. Is she in range? Oh, crap, no she's not. Well, this hasn't worked. <laughs> this hasn't worked at all. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> Damn it. Oh well. Oh well, c'est la vie. Man, we are taking a pounding from these ships. In fact, we're going to have to run away. Damn it. drive active. Okay, because we took such a pounding there and we know that we've been applying perfectly, we're going to take off a missile computer and we're going to put on our shield booster. Shield boost amplifier, I should say. Right, let's get back out there. Okay, let's try killing these guys with javelins. I know it's put our damage all the way down to like 700 with the missiles. But trying to get up close with these guys was just hurting us too much. Because we're probably right on their optimal range, which is why they were hitting us so hard. Plan now is to head away from them and try and fight them in their falloff range so they're less accurate. And we've improved our tank by 33%. I think we'll try running the guidance computer without a script in it so it does a little bit of range and a little bit of application and we'll see how this goes. 73 is pretty good, kilometers wise. Warp drive active. Okay, here we go again. Okay, and immediately go straight away from them, lock them up. And get straight to work with the javelins. Well, <laughs> application seems absolutely fine on cruisers. Oh, that's brilliant. Probably because I've got really high skills, but the application on these torpedoes is absolutely fine. That is not a problem. Wow. Impressed with that. Right, let's turn them off. Then start on the next cruiser. And drones can go and kill the last cruiser. And we'll play with the battleship. See, the tank's much better now. See, all these lasers are missing us because we're at, we're actually at their fall-off range now. As I said, you live and learn. We thought this might happen, which is why we brought this module with us. Then what we thought might happen did happen. And now we're just going to manually fly around at around 70 kilometers. And they're all missing us and any hits they are hit landing on us are being dealt with by our increased tank. Then we're gonna be fine. You can't always just banzai with short range torpedoes. You have to be clever sometimes, you know. Should we're getting a little bit close to these guys. Yeah, we'll be fine. Stop fighting because he's about to die. There he goes. Come on, drones, kill that cruiser. Okay, they're actually hitting us all the time now, so we're going to have to double click away from them. We let ourselves get a little bit too close. A 
I'm not going to refit to rage just because I strayed into range because the tank's taking a beat and I'm going to get back out of range and get them back to missing us. That's the plan anyway. We may go fast in a straight line, but we're not very agile. There we are. We're starting to miss us again now. That's good. Oh, I know the shield's low. And we'll just cut back closer to the gate. Come on, ship. Turn. There we are. Sometimes it does make more sense to do less damage, but from further away. And I think the volleys that are in the air are going to finish that guy off. Yes, they did. So I could maybe have turned the missiles off one volley sooner there. Oh well. well we'll just kind of approach the gate now, I think. Hopefully we can kill this guy before we have to reload. Yes, yes we can. Okay, no reinforcements, that's good. Now, we know that Scarlet is going to be in this next room. Do we try and kill her with rage again, because that didn't work out too well for us last time, did it? No, we're going to stick with the javelins. So we know that we've taken off our missile guidance computer. Even if we change to range and rage and put a range script in here, we still probably... Hmm. Let's think about this. So if we went to Mjolnir Rage and put a range script in, you would have 45 kilometers range. That's quite tempting, you know. All right, let's try that. Might as well. Rage in there. Range in here. And 45 kilometer range. Okay, let's see what we can do in here. Warp drive active. Hopefully Scarlet is close to 45 kilometers. She does stick around a little bit longer in this room. But she can still escape if you don't kill her. Like, artillery ships are the best for this because they just push out like 15,000 damage in a single volley and they just instantly kill her. Okay, well these guys are all pretty close so let's just head this way. No, she's bang within range of rage. Let's have a crack. Nope, she's disappeared. Damn it. Okay, now we have a, a mix. Of Serpentus and Garistas. That's fine because they're all kinetic. Until we got up to speed, our tank was taking a beating. Now we're kind of up to speed. It's kind of holding steady. I'd quite like to remove these guys because these guys will jam us and I don't want to get jammed. Eighty-one kilometer range is pretty good. That's good. That's one down. So we'll just head straight upwards. Sick the drones on this one. Now, there is a reinforcement spawn in this room. I know that for a fact. If 
for the other drones, kill the other two cruisers, and I'll just start demolishing the battleships. Just kind of keep the manual piloting so we don't go too far away from the gate, but also keep the transversal up with these guys. Well, the javelins seem to be killing things just fine. I was tempted there just for a second to reload to rage. Might do that after this next battleship dies. Torpedoes, reload faster. Boom! There we are, that's more like it. We've got 45 kilometer range, that's fine, everything's well within that. Then we'll go for this one because he's closer. Head this way a little bit. He's going to die, so we'll just move the drones onto the next target right now. Here he goes, boom! So we'll get around 30 million-ish in bounty from this mission plus another 30 odd in loot and salvage it is quite lucrative it does take a while and it is good fun 
Alright drone, switch target. The one you're on is about to die as soon as the next lot of missiles gets there, just like that. Hey, can we kill this battleship in four volleys? I'm doubtful. Doesn't look like it. A module has run out of charges. A module has run out of charges. Oh, not quite. Oh well. Do you with rapid heavy missiles? This would be a 35 second process. <laughs> That's just no fun when you're under so much fire. Turn the micro warp drive off, stop the ship, and bring the drones back. Again, Scarlet is going to be in the next room. She might be at quite a long range, so we're going to reload to Javelins, get her off the field first, because she is a battle cruiser, after all. Been going for 21 minutes. It's not too bad, is it? Yeah, I think the capacitor has recharged enough. It recharges really fast when nothing's running. Because we've got three cap rigs, two cap things here, and a cap battery. Warp drive active. This room probably will be all javelin because everything's at long range in this room. All right, Scarlet, where are you? Oh, she's surrounded by Gerastas. Seventy-five. Oh man, she's way too far away. Right, fine. We'll reload to Scourge Javelin. We'll go straight up. And we'll clear out all the Garistas first. Starting a course of battle cruisers, because battle cruisers are very squishy and they deal out a decent amount of damage, so they're very easy to clear a lot of damage off the field. That one died in about three hits, so we'll count how many we do to this one. That's one, that's two. After the stud volley goes, we'll turn it off. Okay, maybe it's just two. Okay, two volleys for these guys. Yeah, one. Two and turn the module off. Ah, there's another one there. One. And two, and turn the module off. These dire ones are a bit annoying. They do have increased resistances. Quite a lot, 72 is, I mean, it's, it's not huge, but it's annoying. Okay, so we know that these Battle cruisers took two shots each, even with javelins. Wow. Okay, we're actually out of range of that guy. Oops, we're going a little bit too fast. Oh, I'll just have a look at the frigates then, whilst we're waiting. Alright, we'll kill frigates with torpedoes then. Well, that's not an issue. That is good fun. Misjudged that slightly. We didn't quite kill the first one. Now it'll die. And then we'll get back on the cruisers. And all the time, this lot at the back are approaching us, and an Iron Scarlet's approaching us. In fact, if she's approached us within 60, get the drones on her. The tank's okay because we're fighting everything at extreme range. Just shorten the range a little bit. No, we'll just cut back across the way we were going. I would quite like to get within range to kill these missile batteries because they're really annoying. Right, drones on her and then missiles on me. See, these are these 
cruiser's trying to jam us, which means we'd lose unlocks apart from the one we have on the cruiser. Scarlet. See, she's really weak to EM. Five million bounty. No, we didn't kill her in the second room. Didn't kill her in the third room. This has wounded my professional pride that having to wait till the fourth room to kill her. As soon as she's killed, you can hand a mission in, but don't do that. There's so much bounty on offer here. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, the drones are back in. We're kind of zigzagging our way closer to these turrets because I really want to kill them. I really want this guy to die. Come on, hurry up. Die. That's fine. And then we shall reload to Mjolnir Rage, because everything's within 45 kilometers now, which is great. And we'll get the drones to kill the turrets. Which is also pretty nice. I make drones? Go and work on the turrets. The turrets are annoying because they're missiles, so they're always hitting us and they're keeping constant pressure on our tank. Everything else is really close because we're going really fast. We're just about handling it. You know, our EM resist is pretty crap. It's only 43. And these guys are all doing EM and thermal. Hey, the drones killed the turret. Go, drones! We just kind of fly in a circle like this underneath everything. There are a lot of reinforcement spawns in this final room. We've kind of drifted a little bit too far away from that one. We're kind of out of range of it at the minute, to be honest. But we'll soon get back into range. Good. The drones will kill the cruise missile battery. The cruise missile batteries are the ones that really hurt you. The heavy ones are just an annoyance. There we are. Now we're in range. Boom! Dead. Kill that. There we go. Right. Then the drones are going to get the last turret. Excellent. There's two or three reinforcement spawns and they always spawn way over here at about 100 kilometers ish So as soon as these guys are dead, we'll reload to javelins. Sweet. Head over to where they're going to spawn. Because you know that our javelins only go 81 and they are going to spawn around about 100 so I'd rather close the distance now so we can start applying damage as soon as they appear. Bring the drones back, this guy's about to explode. And there he goes. Okay, we're actually dead on range. Well that's fine. 
that is not an issue. In that case, I'll head down and we'll get into rage range. We'll just reload for the hell of it. Our range is 45, this one's at 46. He's going to be the first one that dies. He's going to die right now. The tank is completely fine now. That's good. We'll just slash down straight across these guys. Keep the tracking nice and high. Have the drones even reached it yet? No. <laughs> now they've reached it. There they go. In fact, switch targets drones. You took too long to get to that guy. He's going to die. There he goes. Boom. But let's just see how long it takes drones to kill a battleship. Ages, because they're unbonused. They're only doing about 130 DPS or something. We've also missed out on an extra bit of loot. If you can kill Scarlet in the third room, she drops a loot box with a an implant in it. The implant used to be worth about 9 million, the price has now dropped. It's only worth about 3.5. Man, these guys will spawn right on top of us. We'll just attack whoever the drones are attacking this guy. So we haven't got that, we only killed her once, so we've missed out on about 8 million in total from this mission, but it's fine. I mean, all these battleships are worth a million each, so that's not a problem. I think it's taken a bit of a beating at the minute, but it'll stabilise, it'll be fine. Change direction a little bit too late, we're just out of range of this guy now. Maybe the tank's not going to be fine. Okay, let's bail. Stop firing because we're out of range. We have got time to let the drones come back. We know there's free repairs in this system, so let's just go and get them. Warp drive active. Now yeah, we'll finish these guys off with javelins when we come back. Okay, back once again, hopefully for the last time. Now we're going to use javelins at 80 odd kilometers.
Fighting at like 80 kilometers is very much cruise missile range territory, but you know. When we got into range of our rage torpedoes, we were absolutely demolishing things. So I think 1200 DPS is worth the trade off. Drive active. Right, mission done. Let's go and hand it in and count up. Okay, so I've been out and got all the salvage from those missions. It was only 15 million esque. That's not great. Here's the bounties. This is the entire first mission. We got it all in one big whack, about eight and a half. And this is Dread Pirate Scarlet. 15 here, 9 here, and this three up here. About 28 million. As I said, you usually get about 35, and that's if you can kill Scarlet twice. So we missed out on that. So I think our Raven fit handled itself really well. What we learned is that we didn't actually need two missile guidance computers, because even our Tech 2 Rage torpedoes were applying perfectly to cruisers with just the one. So we've tinkered with the fit, we have now perfected it. So I hope you found this useful and entertaining, and I'm sure I'll come back again with another ship fitting video in the very near future. Until then, do take very good care of yourselves, I'll talk to you later.